Well, it's that time again. We're back again in February of 2023. We have a bunch of new uh, things added to this new Army 3D update. 30 new report requests have been merged, so we have a bunch of new features. Let's get started. Previously in Army 3D, if you wanted to play the game that you've been working on, you had to go down to the uh, project settings, the render settings, go down to the Army player, configure your settings, and press play. Now it's all available at the top, right at your fingertips, so you can configure all the most important settings, choose your starting scene, the different render path you want to play, and also activate debug, uh, debug console if you want. You can open the projects folder where you can import things like uh, sound effects, images, stuff like that. We can also just press play and play the game really easily. And you can also press F5. We also have a bunch of new nodes imported in this uh, new version. One of them, for example, is the random string, which is, I mean, it says it all really. You can generate a random string. You can input some characters and uh, uh, set a, a length and it will generate a random string for that and it's really great for passwords and stuff like that, uh, the in-game mechanics. We also have a brand new category in the Shift A menu and this is the draw category. Now these draw nodes are super powerful, we know that, I've been talking about them for a while now, really awesome stuff because Army 3D's uh, weakest point is definitely the 2D editor, the canvas editor. So the fact that we can now control all our UI user nodes is really, really powerful. I've already made a video about post-processing and the compositing effects, but in the compositor now we have a brand new option called Distort. And if you check that, you can control the intensity and create a distortion effect uh, where, where the screen is all wavy and it's looking really cool, like a water reflection. We also have these two new collectioners, which can be really useful, especially when we have all these new arrayers. Now, I'm going to make a whole new video about arrays because they can be uh, rather complicated and very useful uh, for a lot of different situations. But for example, in my uh, raycasting video, we talked about how to uh, use arrays and collections to determine which objects to uh, actually affect the arrays and which to ignore. And well, this can be very useful because we can now add objects to that collection and remove objects from that collection. So if you have objects that are spawned at runtime, then there you go. You can now control more about what is going to be in and out of the collection at runtime. So it's a great option. If you never get to the Armory add-on settings, go down to Advanced and go to the Build Preferences. Over here we have the CMFT that uses it to open TL. Now what this does is it generates radiance maps, so essentially light maps for your games. Now this can be uh, something that takes a couple seconds, but it can take quite a while, and sometimes it lags and it stays behind because when it uses open TL, it can cause a few problems. So now we have the ability to disable it, and when we disable it, when we build and play our games inside of Army 3D, the build times will be a lot faster. So you can test out which works best for you with it checked or with it unchecked. Either way, it's still going to build the maps, it's just how it builds the maps, the different processes that are going on on the machine that are different. So you can test it out, but usually with it unchecked, it is pretty awesome and is uh, providing a lot faster results for many community members. Something that's really important is the redesign of the compositor workspace because now we have the ability to change the textures of our lens textures or look textures. So for things like color grading or things like lens textures. So for example, I don't think I've talked about it before, so let me give you a small walkthrough of how it works. I have here my folder, this is my project folder. The bundled folder has whatever you want, for example, the uh, canvas, the fonts and images, or even sound effects and stuff like that. I have an i.png image. We can go ahead down here, activate the lens texture, type in i.png, and this is going to be our lens texture. So for example, if you want a dirt image or a mud image or something like that, that you want to have a lens texture, uh, you can just do this and then it's going to create that eye texture as a lens texture. Obviously it's completely distorted because it's not designed to be a lens texture. It's just a random PNG image that I have on my desktop. So yeah, you can see how this works really well. And especially if you want to do things like uh, mud and dirt and blood and stuff like that on the screen, it's super useful. Now we do have two new nodes that are rather different. These are the camera start and end and the get camera start and end. And essentially these give or set values, which are float values uh, of position. So essentially over here you can see we have our camera and obviously it's at zero 
and end is zero. So it's not actually showing anything. So what this means is essentially just how the cameras are working. You've got a minimum position and a maximum distance that has been rendered in. And this just allows you to control what those distance values are. And so as you can see, we can input a large amount and this is uh, the distance between the camera and this value is going to be rendered in. We also have the possibility to hard code this into our camera by selecting the camera and going over, over to the clip start and clip end. This is the same thing as we have in node format. It said this is interactive. You can interact with it at runtime. So at runtime, we can modify what uh, these values are, would be. So you can modify what the camera can see, how far it can see at runtime, which is super useful if you're doing something more precise. And just this extra level of control is always welcome. And there you go. Those are the highlights of this month's release. And uh, like every month, we obviously have some bug fixes and some things behind the scenes just to overall improve the engine, whether it be speed or just some typos and fixes like that. So yeah, thank you very much to all the people that have contributed to this month's release. Obviously, this is a community-driven project, so all the new features and updates and fixes and maintenance being done is all done by the community, so we can't thank them enough. And uh, we'll see you next month for a brand new release. Until then, have fun.